Okay, today is October the 18th, 2015, and we're watching uh, the rainbow color infrared loop for the Northeast Pacific. And we're watching Hurricane Olaf down here, which is a Category 1 storm with 80 mile per hour winds. It's moving uh, due west at about uh, 14 miles per hour. Let's go ahead and take a look at the National Hurricane Center map right now. And uh, Hurricane Olaf is uh, moving along here at 12 miles per hour due west with 80 mile per hour winds and uh, it's forecast to make a uh, sweeping turn to the north around uh, Wednesday and Thursday so we'll keep an eye on that uh, and see what what happens uh, here's the storm right here uh, and we also have a disturbance right here which has a 40 percent chance of hurricane formation in two days so we'll be keeping an eye on both of these uh, storms, all right? This storm has a core pressure of 989 millibar, and it's moving along, uh, as I say, west, and we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, meantime, we have a jet stream flow right along here, and uh, this is mushrooming into a, uh, an electronic wall that has been set up by a phased array radar right here. This prevents uh, emerging of this moisture field right here with uh, this low pressure uh, moisture system right here. So what's happening is that the jet stream is mushrooming and it's turning to the left, uh, going to the north uh, east. And this is done uh, purposely. This is done, uh, they've engineered this just for this reason. They don't want this moisture flow to feed this spinning vortex here because it would become much larger and much stronger and it would actually deliver a lot more rain. <clears throat> okay, so uh, this morning uh, in Los Angeles, we have uh, overcast skies. It did rain a little bit this morning, I probably about a 32nd of an inch. It rained pretty hard for about five minutes and then stopped. And now we just have uh, overcast skies. The barometer is steady at 30 inches. That's been the pressure for the last uh, four days, basically speaking. Uh, we've got 75% humidity, relative humidity. We've got a temperature of 70 degrees. And the dew point is 61, almost 62 degrees. So it is, it feels a little bit muggy. And we did get a little bit of rain, so that's good. But we can see what's happened here. Uh, this low pressure has been uh, attacked by a transmitter. And we can see the dark, dry areas all through that core. And of course, that uh, destroys the uh, lift capability uh, of the rain system. You got to have moisture and lift to get rain. And so, when they prevent the lift by uh, putting uh, clockwise <clears throat> air on the core, uh, that destroys the uh, rain-making capability of the, of the uh, weather system. <clears throat> and also the chemtrails do the same thing. That causes a capping inversion layer, hot air layer. So uh, those two things are stopping the uh, rainfall in many areas, mainly in California. All right, let's go ahead and look at some of these other maps. Uh, we've got the... Uh, Water vapor loop here for the East Pacific. This is Hurricane Olaf. And Hurricane Olaf is being targeted by a, a microwave transmitter. And we can see that the core right now is actually two sections. And it's being hit. And we can see a blast pattern right here all the way around. These icicle-like looking uh, uh, rain bands are uh, basically a, a very high, high uh, speed, high pressure uh, out, outbound uh, pressure wave, which causes this uh, pattern right here. These uh, cores are targeted with a microwave. It heats the uh, core water vapor almost instantaneously. We get uh, expanding air and water vapor shooting out radially. And we have uh, this uh, feature, which is a, a blast pattern. And uh, sometimes if they hit it very strongly, we get a, a very strong pressure wave that looks like a, a band moving out uh, radially from the center of the storm but they're doing this very carefully here today and but we can tell that they are doing this uh, we can determine that by the core uh, color we've got a scale right here we've got uh, blue is the most intense and after it's hit with the microwave the, the uh, core diminishes and we can see the color change right here and a blast pattern so those two things and uh, if there's a, a, a pressure wave uh, sometimes we can see that in uh, all views, mainly the uh, visible light mode. We can see, a lot of times we can see a, a blast ring moving out. But today, uh, that's 
not the case. Uh, on the visible light mode, we can see a crater-like indentation, and we see a ripple. But what they're doing here with the uh, visible light mode now is they're putting a, a fluorescent overlay so that those details are hidden uh, before we would see a tiny dimple right on the point where the microwave would hit the core. But uh, they're hiding that now. But that's okay because we can still see the blast pattern, and we can see the uh, color change on the core. There's no question at all that they're hitting this storm. They've allowed it to uh, build up into an 80-mile-per-hour hurricane, and uh, uh, they're putting on a show. If this gets near Hawaii, they will re-steer it. Uh, we'll keep an eye on this, okay? So if anything develops, you will see it here. All right, uh, let's go on and move to the, uh, this is the western U.S. water vapor loop. You can get a better idea of this low pressure, which is being uh, destroyed. The uh, core is all disorganized. We see clockwise movement right here, right there. That's descending air. That's a, that's a result of a transmitter hitting that core in uh, various spots to uh, break down the core pressure and the organization of this entire system. Now, this is some of the rain that passed through the uh, Southland earlier today. It went up and around. We did get a little bit of rain. But uh, basically, the weather people on TV are forecasting a dry low, which is what this is. There's not a whole lot of um, precipitation in this low. We can see it again <coughs> right here. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, <coughs> this is the infrared loop. We're watching the uh, circulation here. And uh, uh, so we've got the dry air all through here. That is preventing the uh, the uh, storm from having lift. So we've got, we've got to have lift and moisture to get rain. And uh, they're preventing the lift by uh, forcing down this uh, hot air that's descending air it uh, destroys the uh, rain making capability of the storm of the low pressure system all right uh so here is the infrared loop we can see a lot of rain moving in on the jet stream it's all being redirected by that uh, electronic wall that's been set up here this is man-made it's engineered to uh, stop this flow from feeding this vortex otherwise this would become very intense we'd get a lot of rain probably too much <laughs> But the point is, is that this is what they've been doing for four years, and uh, they haven't uh, got it <clears throat> totally engineered properly, uh, dialed in, so that California can get rain, uh, while they also protect us from this apparent weather warfare, this conveyor belt of storms that we're seeing uh, one after another right out of the Bering Sea. These are just coming off uh, the Bering Sea like a conveyor belt, and so... Uh, and this, is, this happened all summer, all winter, doesn't matter what time of the year. These things are coming out of the Bering Sea all the time. And they're very large. We can see one here. They've got heat on this. Uh, and so this is a problem. Uh, I, I believe that uh, weather warfare is, is very much a, a part of the uh, equation here because of the fact that in the movies, uh, why in the world are they spraying? And what in the world are they spraying? They talk about the G8 countries are the only ones getting chemtrails. And that would make a good case for uh, why this is a currency war, because the G8 countries are all uh, dollar-dominated. Uh, the reserve currency is the dollar in all those countries. So uh, that's just my, uh, that's my view. Um, anyway, let's keep going here. We've got the, uh, uh, this is the infrared loop for the Western U.S. Uh, here is the geostationary. Uh, satellite image. We've got a good shot of this low right here. We can see this uh, close up. Uh, some of this has chemtrails in it. Some of this flow right here. This is the uh, jet stream flow that is mushrooming into that uh, electronic wall right here. And we do see some chemtrails. Um, and also, uh, it's hard to see here, but uh, they probably are chemtrailing here because this is winding right back into the uh, core of this uh, spinning low right here, which is a very large. Uh, upper, mid and upper uh, level, uh, low pressure. All right. And this is that electronic wall they built with a uh, radar. And we can see that that's doing a fairly effective job of keeping the uh, two moisture fields separated. Okay. Um, let's go and look at the uh, jet stream map. Uh, we can see that that jet stream has been interrupted right here where they have that uh, electronic wall set up. Most of it's going up to the north into Canada. 
Okay, let's take a look at the, uh, this is the 500 millibar, and they show the low here. They don't show any highs in the core, though. But this is not totally accurate. Uh, there is high pressure here to interrupt this uh, counterclockwise motion to throttle it back. That's not being shown there. Let's look at the 300 millibar. Same thing. They're just indicating low right here. And then we got these lows up here in the Gulf of Alaska. Now, if we look at the uh, the surface pressure analysis right here, um, we can see right along the California coast, there's two lows indicated, actually three on the west coast. This is the entire west coast. And then we have no high pressure indicated. At, uh, this is the surface analysis chart. So there should be some highs indicated where that harp transmitter is interrupting the uh, flow of that uh, counterclockwise low. We do have that uh, ever present high right here that's indicated and we have a high here uh, and we've got the a cold front right here and they show a warm front advancing in that direction so let's look again uh, they have a harp transmitter all through here this is all man-made this is a giant uh, hot air uh, 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 border a channel that's been built in and that's going to prevent this flow from merging with this hurricane and they're trying to keep this tail, any moisture from this uh, system here, from moving back up and getting tangled up in this uh, low right here. So they've got high all through here, uh, but yet some of that moisture is moving up and uh, winding into this low. So they're going to try to dry this out as uh, best they can, I guess. We'll put high pressure here in the days ahead, and uh, they'll keep a high right all through here. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Uh, whoops. All right. Anyhow, I was talking about how this tail uh, moves. They're gonna they're gonna keep high pressure through here, and uh, prevent any of that um, uh, the tail of this hurricane from moving back up and winding around into this uh, low right here. So that's basically the strategy, uh, and also to keep this flow uh, separated with this. Uh, electronic wall right here they've got set up okay so that's it uh, if there's anything that uh, comes up we will go ahead and do an update okay that's it